Hello and welcome to Watching Washington. I'm Sean English and today is Friday, September 23rd, where we sit less than 50 days away from Election Day. The Federal Open Market Committee met this week to approve another interest rate hike. And it is likely that interest rates will continue to increase in an effort to slow it down. This comes as home mortgages hit 6% for the first time since 2008. When pressed about inflation in a clip of President Biden's 60-minute interview, the president said inflation was a process and that it had barely spiked in recent months, though it remains at four-decade high. This past Sunday, President Biden appeared on a 60 Minutes interview on CBS. He declared that the coronavirus pandemic to be, quote, over, a statement not expected by Biden's top health officials. He then noted that the nature of the pandemic is changing, as more people are now foregoing masks altogether. The president also added that the U.S. is still doing a lot of work regarding COVID-19. Also notably, President Biden addressed his uncertain plans for re-election in 2024. He stated that while it has always been his intention to seek another term, whether or not he does, quote, remains to be seen. On Monday, President Biden was in London for the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. While reflecting on the late British monarch, he noted that, quote, she was the same in person as her image, decent, honorable, and all about service. President Biden was among dozens of world leaders who paid their respects as the queen was laid to rest. Former President Donald Trump was in Ohio this week to campaign for J.D. Vance, a Republican nominee for Senate. Vance is looking for what many are calling a Trump bump and hopes to restore faith in his name for the voting people of Ohio. Tim Ryan is a Democratic candidate. According to polls yesterday, Vance leads Ryan by 0.3 points. This race is close and crucial to the Senate race altogether. Ryan leads Vance by nearly 19% on women voters and 21% on independent voters. Like all elections, it will come down to the main question, voter turnout. New York City Mayor Eric Adams plans to take legal actions to stop Texas from sending more buses of asylum seekers. Around 2,500 migrants from Texas have been sent to New York since May. Adams declares that the homeless shelter is at their breaking point. The city has opened 23 shelters and expects to open 38 more for migrants. Adams pleaded with Texas Governor Greg Abbott for at least a heads up before sending people in New York City. Former Mayor Mike Bloomberg said that City Hall is looking at using a cruise ship as temporary living space for the asylum seekers. However, a permanent measure is an issue to be solved. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a Republican, sent 50 migrants to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, last Wednesday. Migrants who flew to Martha's Vineyard decided to sue DeSantis, claiming they are victims for his scheme of political purpose. This week marked the 77th UN General Assembly meeting in New York. This is the first time in three years since the assembly last met in person due to pandemic-related restrictions. According to C-SPAN, UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez addressed topics including food insecurity, climate change, and the dangers of geopolitical division. He said, quote, our world is in big trouble. President Biden, and other world leaders also addressed the assembly. As expected, a major topic of discussion has been the war in Ukraine. As the government spending deadline looms, Senator Joe Manchin is proposing a pipeline permitting reform and environmental review deal backed by the White House. These provisions are facing opposition from both sides of the aisle. According to CNN, Progressive Democrats are alarmed at the deal's potential environmental impacts, while Republicans are in no mood to give Manchin a win after his vote enacted the Inflation Reduction Act into law. The next Congress from setting spending levels, that, does that need an explanation? I don't think so. That should be, that should be on its face 
right there. Government funding expires in 10 days. National Voter Registration Day was Tuesday this week. And here on Purdue University campus, the push to get students signed up was in full force. Our special guest this week is with the Purdue Votes Coalition to discuss this push, how it went, and what's next in the effort to get young people to the polls. We'll turn it over now to Avik Patel, who's standing by with our guest. Avik? Thank you, Sean. The Purdue Votes Coalition is a campus-wide committee. Its mission is to increase student voting rates and to help students become engaged and active in their citizenship. I'm joined today by Logan Farrakhan to talk about their efforts. Logan, thank you for being with us today. My first question is, how did you get involved with Purdue Votes and why is voting important to you personally? Of course. So I'm Logan, as you mentioned, and I'm currently a senior. But two years ago when I was a sophomore, I got in more involved in Purdue Votes through the other organization I help run, which is Pi Sigma Alpha, a political science honor society. Um, I just kind of hopped on board and helped take over the campus wide challenge where we made a um, similar kind of training video on how to register for students to vote and then sent it out to professors and then got more involved with National Voter Registration Day, which is every year in September. So what was the second part of your question? Um, that you, you answered the question. Oh, uh, okay, going perfect. off of that, perfect yeah. segue, how did your Voter Registration Day go? Yeah, so our National Voter Registration Day was yesterday um, for 2022. Um, it went really well. I haven't tallied up all of our registration forms yet. That's my to-do list after, um, but pretty good. I was, um, I'm stationed normally on the residential side of campus. So we have a lot of freshmen over there who either um, are just now 18 and can now register to vote or don't really understand the process. So we're there to help answer questions and confirm that yes, you do have you know, Indiana residency, you can register to vote here. Um, so I think it went really well. I'm excited to kind of go through all the forms and mail out the ones for other states. So successful, I hope. And then we have a lot to do before November 8th for vote education. I imagine. Um, how important do you think the youth vote should be and will be in this midterm election? Oh, it's incredibly important. Um, we can kind of see who represents us, who represents us very visually. Um, within our politicians' um, age. That's a very kind of um, easy thing to look at. And when a lot of our politicians are, you know, in their 70s, 80s, their values may and are a lot different than, you know, people who are just turning 18, who are just going to college for the first time. The problems that they are focusing on um, and their kind of values, very different. So, you know, people who and students who are just now, you know, learning to vote and getting involved in the civic, you know, process, their kind of their vote is going to look a lot different. And that's really important because they are going to be impacted the most by a lot of the policies that are brought in to by the current politicians. So a lot of students don't really understand um, their importance in voting or the one vote doesn't matter kind of mentality but it really does. Um, we see elections all the time that are incredibly close and students you know, not voting um, really kind of impacts a lot of other cool, a lot of policies that just aren't presented anymore. Yeah, um, going off of that, you mentioned the mentality that most students have with voting in midterms. Yeah. What other hurdles do you think prevent students here at Purdue from becoming more civically involved in midterms in particular? Right, I think there are um, a lot of hurdles, you know, before students turn 18. Uh, personally, I can't remember being, you know, reminded by like my civics teacher or any of my high school teachers like, hey, you should register to vote. Hey, this is how you do that. Um, this is why it's important. So just like the gap in our education system, just within Indiana, and I'm sure it could be even worse in some of other states, um, where students aren't really being taught why they should register to vote, how to register to vote. Um, they're confused on the process. We have a lot of students come to us saying, oh, I live out of state, I can't register to vote. When in reality, like you have a residence here, you live here at Purdue, you can register to vote here. So there's a lot of um, different kind of questions or students not knowing um, how to do that, the process, uh, the election board here 
can kind of be overwhelmed with, you know, students wanting to register to vote, which is fantastic. Um, but then that makes them a bit less likely to wanting to help us and answer their questions just because of their limited, you know, kind of resources. So I think more of the lack of education on one part and then lack of resources and funding towards voting. There are a lot of election boards that just don't have the funding and the resources to answer all the questions people have, either through email, through call, um, and then help make sure they get re uh, registered properly and then have information to vote. You've been very involved on campus uh, <laughs> with getting Purdue Boilermakers to vote in these midterms. Yeah. What can you tell us from your experience in the field, as they say, uh, about the temperature on campus, how people are feeling about these midterm elections? What can you tell me about that? So the lo two years ago when I was involved for the first time, it was a presidential election. So it was all hands in deck. It was a very different experience because um, voter turnout anywhere is gonna be exponentially higher for presidential elections. So midterms, we kind of scale back our goals um, to a bit shorter, knowing that you know people aren't gonna, not everyone will come out um, for midterm election, which is probably another gap in our education system. But to your question, um, I forgot the question. What, what can you tell me about the temperature, temperature on campus yes. and how people are yes. feeling about these Perfect. midterm elections from your experience volunteering? Perfect. Right, yes, I remember that now. Um, I think a lot more students, especially freshmen, they like were responding like, yeah, I am registered to vote. Like I said, yesterday I was stationed on the residential side and we have lots of freshmen over there. And normally a lot of students say, oh no, yeah, I need to do that. But it was kind of surprising. I was hearing a lot more yeses, like, yes, I'm already registered. Yes, I already have my mail and absentee. Yes, I already have this. So that's very encouraging. Um, the voter apathy that we kind of see in college students isn't as extreme. And I think that can probably be seen from a lot of, you know, recent, you know, um, policies being in place, state and federal. And then obviously, you know, the recent Supreme Court um, overturning of Dobbs. So I think there's a lot that is kind of pushing younger individuals to be more um, involved in voting and in every kind of you know process. So. Final question, Logan. We've talked a lot about Purdue Votes. We've talked mm -hmm. a lot about your experience volunteering and getting your fellow Boilermakers to vote. What's your final plea to the Purdue community regarding voting in these midterm elections? Um, obviously, make sure you register to vote. If you're not registered, you can check at vote.org. Um, make sure your friends are registered. That's something I was doing a couple years ago was, you know, calling my friends and family members saying, hey, are you registered to vote? Hey, do you have a voting plan? Do you know where you're voting? What day? Um, voting election, um, early election days and voting, you know, polls and locations are already up. So you can go and look at that information. So making an action plan and helping other students also make an action plan. Because once they have that plan, they're so much more likely to follow it. Um, voting can be um, kind of overwhelming at times because there's so much information. You don't really know who you're voting for, uh, where you're going to vote, when. Um, students have class, they're busy. But making an effort to make time to put a plan together is one of the best things you can do other than, you know, getting out there and voting. Logan, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you. Good luck with voter registration and your efforts to get out the vote. And thank you for watching our show watching Washington today. We'll be back next Friday with another edition of Watching Washington. I'm Avik Patel. Have a great day.